Hi everybody. We're just gonna wait a couple minutes to get started. Have an awesome friend joining us today. Just wait for her to get on. Hey. Hi, Hi. <laughs> How are you? Hi. I'm doing well. I'm How good. are you? I'm doing good. Um, I'm so excited to have you on with us today. This is super fun. Um, Millie and I go to school together. We both go to the Los Angeles County High School for the Arts, where Millie is an awesome actress. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to open up and maybe ask uh, if you could tell us a little bit about you and your art and kind of your practice. Yeah, for sure. Um, well, I mean, I started out like any young child that wanted to <laughs> become involved with the arts. Um, I think especially with acting, um, some usually like the passion starts with maybe a school play or something small like that. And you realize that you really do love art and it's something that you do want to pursue. Um, but it's definitely more of a hobby. But as I grew up, I realized that I wanted to uh, go deeper with my art and explore it, um, especially when it comes to the intersectionality of art um, and how it can be used as like kind of like a weapon, et cetera. So I, I really got into arts activism, kind of like Arnie. And I really love just um, improving my art and focusing on um, being able to grow as an actress, but also being able to use my skills to help um, inspire and help yeah, others. Yeah, definitely. I definitely agree with like the intersectionalities of art and like how we can utilize it um, to make change. And on that note, I guess we could even talk about um, the art hour. So we started a nonprofit this summer to teach art to kids across the country. Um, we were thinking about like underserved areas in LA, but then it kind of expanded um, internationally, which is awesome. We had like students from Romania and from the Philippines. Um, so I don't know if you want to talk about a little bit about like teaching and kind of like the class that you teach for the art hour. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Um, as I said, you know, going to an art school, um, specifically LOXA, LA County High School for the Arts, it's an amazing experience because you're surrounded by artists who are very passionate and driven about their work. Um, being able to be within a theater ensemble for half of my time, um, like as a student or like half of my school day in general is just, it's such a culture shift. And I think that's so amazing um, being surrounded by people who think a lot like you, who use the creative process and a lot of parts of their lives. Um, and I think also with the art hour, when Ari started it, I was so excited about this project um, because I also wanted to give students the opportunity um, to pursue arts. You know, if you never have that, that um, access or, or that invitation to kind of explore this whole new world, you're never gonna know if you like it and it might be too late. Um, so it's just starting off from a young age, people like students should have access to arts because truly it is something that's life changing. Um, finding a passion, especially for something that's arts based is such a special thing. And it's not something that you can come across every day. So with the art hour, we're definitely um, like just inspiring people from like all over the world and also within like our community in Los Angeles. And I think that's so, that's so inspiring and so amazing. That yeah, we're doing that. no, I definitely agree. Access is so important, especially at a young age. Um, I think we were both fortunate. I don't know, I found art very young, probably like when I was in elementary school um, because I had an art class. And I think it's, it's mm -hmm. a little bit crazy because California actually does mandate that art be offered in all five areas. So that's music, visual arts, dance, theater, and uh, media arts, which is kind of like cinematic arts, um, but can umbrella term for many other things uh, for all students in grades K through 12, as long as they're in a public school. And only 12% of schools comply with that. And that was before COVID-19 and, and everything that we're experiencing now. So, you know, we're just wondering like, okay, this was how much people, how many people have access, 12%, like what does that look like going forward? Mm -hmm. and kind of how can we expand our ideas because I think a lot of it is like it's not necessary right like that's what people think um 
So I guess, I don't know, what would you say to people who think that the arts maybe aren't necessary in schools? Yeah, um, first, I just wanted to touch on what you said about like um, coronavirus and the access now um, to arts. I think we can look about that. We can look at this um, pandemic in two ways. We can look at it kind of like, you know, it is definitely going to have negative impacts on arts education because it's it's so hard already for us to access this. And as you said, the statistics are showing that only like 12% of um, like 12% of schools are only 12% of arts education is actually being um, like available for access for suit for students um, in LA communities. And I just feel like when we look at coronavirus, it's obvious that we can see like how this can negatively impact that. We can see that um, people kind of, because they have to transition so fast because this pandemic just totally took over our lives. Like um, we have to try to figure out how we're even going to schedule school or how we're going to transition from having a completely like in school um, uh, kind of scene to just being completely online. That's already a lot of work. And then incorporating arts can be hard on the teachers for sure. And it's also something that's going to take a while to transition. And if it was only 12% in the beginning, it's going to be even harder to transition. Um, but also I think like this can be a good thing um, for sure. There's always two ways to look at a situation, like the, the glass, like it can be half empty or half full. Um, like I know personally, when I was teaching at the Art Hour, um, there was one there was one uh, lovely lady who joined me like almost every week that I had a class, and her name was Gabriella. Um, hopefully, Gabriella will see this. I don't know, <laughs> maybe she will. But <laughs> Gabriella, if you're out there, you're amazing. Um, I'd say Gabriella was like she never told me her age, but I know she graduated already, and she was like um, in college or or like. Um, yeah, she had graduated high school. And she was kind of taking this time during the pandemic because, you know, she was not, um, she didn't have to like specifically go to work because everything was virtual. So she could come and attend my classes and kind of, she'd always like kind of wanted to learn about acting. So coming here, she was able to kind of restart that passion that she had for performing. And I thought that was such a beautiful thing that this pandemic was able to allow. It opened up new spaces for like students and people of all ages to really go back and be like, this is the time for me to reflect. Um, how can I go on to increase my arts education or how have, how have I been missing out on the creative process? So I think there's definitely two ways to look at that. And oh, last thing, really quick before I pass it back to you. Um, for people that say that arts education is not important, I would just say like, first off, um, students, it's it's really hard already for students to kind of um, go, through a, go through a day, um, like that's like 12 hours. Um, because we, we, have, we also have to factor in like homework and we also have to factor in um, we also have to factor in the commute. Uh, school is definitely a rigorous task in and of itself. And having like those few hours or like having that one hour at least of like artistic um, just inspiration and just having that moment to express yourself uh, through art is definitely such a valuable experience. Um, I know there's, spe there's specifically like art therapy and stuff like that because art does heal in a way. And I think it's really magical when students experience art and they find something from it. They find their own kind of um, way to communicate or they find a way to um, release like their emotions or express themselves. Um, so I think that art is definitely one of the most important parts of humanity. I mean, we literally, <laughs> like the ancient civilizations had it. It should be completely outrageous for students not to be able to access it in their schools. So yes, that's yeah, what I would say. No, I definitely agree. I think like even looking at the pandemic, it's an opportunity for us because accessibility is kind of increased in a way of like we're virtual. So I can reach somebody who's halfway across the country and I don't have to be in the same space as them, but we can share virtual space together um, and learn from each other and mm -hmm. teach these things that maybe we're not being um necessarily addressed in school at first and and yeah the arts are super healing i remember it was actually your class that we had one student join and he was having a tough day um he had come in crying and by the end of class he was like 
I had so much fun. Like after five minutes, he was acting along, he was reading these things. Um, so definitely like the arts are extremely healing and extremely necessary within our schools. Um, so I guess I just wanted to turn our attention a little bit um, because you're joining us on your Instagram page for the Future Voters Project. And voting is definitely an issue um, that coincides with the arts. Like we can vote with the arts in mind. So you just want to tell us a little bit about your project and maybe like why is civic engagement relevant to the arts? Yeah, for sure. Um, something that's really overlooked, I think, is the intersectionality of voting as an issue. First off, we have to talk about voting, like that, and the fact that it is an issue. Um, uh, even in, in even in twenty twenty, um, despite the fact that this should definitely already like be a very smooth transition, we have the pandemic, of course, and that's going to definitely affect the way that we go about everything, um, especially with mail-in ballots this year and all that stuff. Um, but yeah, regardless of whether there's a pandemic or not. Voting has always been an issue. There's always been voter suppression, um, trying to suppress voices of minorities or specific groups um, in order to go in order to go forth to have specific results. Um, and I think like I started this project really because I was passionate about spreading awareness about that, um, specifically for youth voter suppression. Um, it's 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 such a rampant thing. Like lots of lots of students don't even know how to vote. They don't know like where to vote. They just don't have any idea about where to start because it's such a huge topic and there's so much to it, so much information, and it's so hard to find. Um, so I really started this project um, to create like a space um, that would educate and inform students and also fight against youth voter suppression in that way. And um, I think it's interesting how it relates to arts because when we talk about like arts education and all that stuff, like voting really does mean we're, we're choosing what's important to us. We're putting what, what we believe is important first. And for me as an artist to create a project like this, I really hope that I can use this platform in the future to advocate for arts education and make sure that every student does is able to access um, arts like whether that be in their school, whether that be through programs like the Art Hour and broadcasting those programs, et cetera. Um, so like there's literally measures that you can go and vote on specifically um, in California, such as Prop 15, where we can give back to our communities and go forth to um, take some of the money that we have been putting towards our bigger businesses and our industrial um companies etc and we can give that back to our communities because we need it so much right now um we can use it towards figuring out how we can uh cope with COVID-19 um and still be able to give students that creative outlet um we can give it to students that um are really passionate about like creating change and are taking the initiative such as like Arnie who like created an entire organization to educate people about the arts and give students this opportunity um there's so many ways that voting um, and utilizing our rights as voters um, coincides with um, arts education and all of that that is related. So yeah, I yeah. think on that note, like being, what does it mean for students to be civically engaged, and what else does that lead to? Like voting mm -hmm. also leads to us maybe being more conscious of like who are our school board members, like who are our city council members, um, and mm -hmm. particularly for school board members, there's like this super revolutionary website. Like before it was difficult to like Google, who's my board member? Like, who are they? Um, yeah. And now there's this website mm -hmm. that you can use and you can type in your school district or like your area code and it gives you your school board members like at the tip of your fingers, at your fingertips. Um, and you have their emails and their, their names and their contact information. And it just makes it so much easier and so much more transparent to then be like, hey, the arts are super important and they're actually mandated like how can we find areas to improve or areas in our budget that we can reallocate? And definitely, definitely with Prop 15 of our Schools and Communities First Act um, is a step in the right direction to reallocating those funds for our communities. Yeah, for sure. And also, I just wanted to say, you have to send me the site I, link for that. I, I will definitely. <laughs> And also just adding on um, to what you're talking about, like getting in contact with um, your reps and all that stuff. Like a lot of people don't realize 
how much change you can create systematically. Um, it's really, it's, I think grassroots movements are always so amazing. Like the people that organize them are just phenomenal. The amount of work and the amount of effort they put in, um, I really admire that, especially the people um, that are also young, like us or like youth. Um, but also when we look at it um, in a way like systematically, like our representatives, they also want to hear what we have to say. Um, if we get in contact and we push for what we want, we're going to have to get a response. Um, that's simply how our representatives work because they are elected through voting. So um, I think definitely it's all, it's all about communication um, and it's all about reaching out and figuring out um, who to reach out to. Who is, who's making these decisions? How can I go forth to influence these decisions? Because my, my opinion counts, right? I am a youth and I am someone that um, values our education. I am someone that goes to school. Like um, it's definitely taking that step towards becoming educated and informed and going out to reach out and um, create a difference both systematically and through yeah, your own ways. Yeah, and it doesn't even have to be, I know sometimes when we think and we're like, we're going to start this movement and it's going to be huge. It sometimes it even starts with conversations. Um, like I was mm -hmm. meeting with one of the legislative um, officials for Ga uh, governor Gavin Newsom's office. And she said like the most awesome thing to me was sh she goes, every time a student wants to meet with me, I take that meeting. Like I make time for them. And it's because especially mm -hmm. as like students and as youth, uh, our voice holds so much power because we're young and we're like, hey, these are the issues that are directly affecting us. And it's not like an adult being like, here are the issues of the youth. And I'm like, yeah, okay, yeah. Sure. <laughs> like who said versus like from our mouths, we're like, these are the issues that affect us. These are the things that are important to us and we want this change. Um, so yeah, especially students, mm -hmm. if you're out there, your voice has so much power um, with your school board members, with your elected officials, it just starts with making that first contact and that first relationship. Yep. Oh my God. I, I cannot even count the amount of times I've heard someone be like, Oh, you know, I'm too young or like, you know, like it's, it's really hard to get involved. You know, I have to like do all this stuff. I don't know if I'm allowed to a lot of like, I don't know if I'm allowed to. And, um, I think that's partially why I wanted to create Future Voters LA and why I wanted to start working with um, youth activists because um, I want to be able to show people that even though we are young, um, we deserve the right to, to speak for ourselves because no one else is going to speak better. Like, we know exactly what we want because we are ourselves. There's nobody that's going to be able to say exactly um, what the youth needs if they're not a member of the youth. Um, that is being affected by whatever issues that are being affected. So like, just take that stand because you know, you, it, it's not about age really. It's about taking the initiative and being passionate. Um, it's about reaching out to your refs and also um, going out and advocating for the causes you believe yeah, in. Yeah, I always say uh, to everybody who's always like, oh, but I don't know. I'm like, okay, but if not us, then like who? And if not now, then when? Like, is it? <laughs> Cause it's, it's almost communal, I think, like our, what we want and what we need is kind of passed down generationally, like the generation before us will want arts access. And if we're not the generation to fight for that, then, you know, we leave that burden to them instead of, um, my parents always say, leave things better than, than you found them. Like if you go to, if you go yep. to somebody's house, you kind of have to like clean up a little bit, um. <laughs> So, like, how can we clean up our systems a little bit and, and leave things better than we found them um, for the next generation that comes after mm -hmm. us? Yeah, I mean, we have a lot of talk about, like, Gen Z in general and um, the amount of power we have. I remember, like, going um, to, like, this Advocacy Institute summer camp. I know you worked at the ACLU, Arnie, but I was also working. I like also went to their summer camp this past summer. It was, it was amazing. It was a great experience. And we just had like, we had a single panel just completely dedicated to like um, talking about the change we can make as Generation Z, kind of what we represent for the activism world. And like, I really do believe that we are the generation of advocates and activists because we're really taking this into our own hands. Um, 
and like it's it's just like with all the movements that are going on it's no longer just adults that are kind of pushing but it's also us that are joining in um so i think that's really amazing and that our our generation as you said is trying to leave things better than we found them or at least i try to think about like I was trying to find a parallel between because you know growing up in an asian household my mom was always like you got to bring a gift whenever you go to someone's house so when i was a kid when i went for play dates we always brought like a sack of oranges or we brought like <laughs> we brought like like some sort of toy for their um child or something like that so you know just be gracious um when you go when you go on to hand it off to the next generation after us when we go on um to hand off the power or like um give whatever state our nation is to our children like we want to give them a gift this press this present this precious thing that we really cultivated and we're passionate about so that way they also realize wow this really holds a lot of power um activism is power act, act advocating for things is also so powerful so yes that is what i that's my parallel oh my god for <laughs> me it was like wash the dishes before you leave your friend's house and so so i'm washing the dishes <laughs> At, in my institutions, in my community. While she's watching yeah. TV, you're just kind of like, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to just yeah. put my mom. So I'm like, how can we wash the dishes of, like, our community? Um, because for me, I don't know. I always, I always compared myself and found these parallels of, like, so we are so fortunate and so privileged to go to art school. But my friends, where I live, in my neighborhood, um, you know, I had my first gallery show at 14. I was like showing in galleries. I was making, I made the 100th birthday cake for sister Karita Kent. And she's like this amazing graphic designer. Um, and so I had all these experiences. <laughs> like yeah. on the birthday cake. She's like, I made a birthday yeah, cake. Yeah, it was like <laughs> awesome. Um, so I'm having all these experiences and these new avenues and I'm getting all these opportunities within the arts and I'm learning so much. Like my freshman year, I had 10 art classes, like in total the entire year. Um, and I was learning for three hours every day. And it was awesome. I was having the time of my life. And then I would go to see my friends or see my neighbors. And they didn't have that access. Like, they didn't have, they didn't know. Like, when I say, oh, I made a charcoal drawing. It was like, oh, the charcoal from the grill? Or, like, you know, what are you talking about? So I think it's so important. And especially our generation is the generation of change to identify those issues and identify where are the gaps that either I'm having personally or that my community is uh, facing and how can I fill those gaps and how can I, you know, amend these things and, and wash the dishes um, and make things, leave things better than how I found them. Um, but yeah, I think that's so beautiful mm -hmm. with the gift too, of like, we want to give this gift to the next generation of like this really different system different school system different art system um so that they can take it and run with it and cultivate it and grow it mm -hmm. yeah and i also just wanted to add to not to our i don't want to add another parallel we've been stacking them on top of each other and <laughs> it's become this complex system that we don't want to touch anymore but what i do want to talk about like um kind of the differences when we when we look at arts education especially within los angeles um I know Lucia's on here. I was talking to her earlier about like me not knowing Los Angeles that well because it's such a big area. And she's like, I've lived here my entire life and I, I literally <laughs> still don't know Los Angeles, the entirety of Los Angeles. But I do know when I was looking um, like at my brother's classes, um, who's like 10 and he just he just went to like the public school in our district. And um, we, we saw kind of the differences um that we have between like an art school that's like supervised by LA County and we have all these amazing opportunities like you said Arnie like half our day is literally dedicated to our arts as I stated before and we're surrounded by students that literally want to do this um thing for the rest of their lives or they're just like they just have this like super furious drive to like go on and create change in some kind of way um while we have a lot of students in like the public school systems who aren't like able to even access some sort of community that allows for them to express their creativity like my brother um the first school that he was at like when we first moved here um they didn't have an art art teacher at all and they
they just like watch YouTube videos during art, art class, like teaching you how to draw and you just kind of like copied. Like you can see there are a bunch of differences when we look at how we can look at the stratification system uh, within our like within our communities and within our city in general. And we have to focus not only on the students that do care a lot about art and have that drive, but also on the students that might not really know anything about art. So they grew up in communities where arts were stigmatized, where arts were like, oh, that's not a real profession. Because that way we can teach them that arts can be important and that arts is a necessary part of life because it truly does enrich how we look at our culture, um, how we look at our culture as a city, um, how we look at other people. And it truly is like, it, it brings in so much. Art is definitely so intersectional, which is why it's so important for us to also teach students that might not be specifically passionate about arts to also care about getting educated. Um, yeah, so that's what I'd say about underprivileged communities that we definitely have to focus yeah, on. Yeah, and I too. think like even communities who have been historically disenfranchised by the arts, like. There are communities where art galleries have come in and gentrification just went rampant and wild and kicked out all of those, oh, man. <laughs> those people in those communities. And so it's like they have this relationship with the arts that's negative. And, and it's like, okay, well, mm -hmm. can we identify why? And can we identify what aspect? And then maybe, mm -hmm. you know, flip the script. Like, how do we give you access now to this thing that maybe you don't have the best relationship with and kind of teach you to use it to tell your own stories and... Mm -hmm. I think like the biggest reason that I've been an artist for so long and um, wanted to start the art hour and wanted to teach art was that I wanted to give people the authority to tell their own narratives and to tell their own stories and to, you know, mm -hmm. give themselves their own name and their own uh, narrative. Because I think oftentimes like for that, whether that be via society or what we look like um, or the news, we have these false narratives kind of thrown onto us. Um, to give people the power to be like, no, I'm not that. I'm actually a space astronaut, a space cowgirl. Like, that's what I am. And that's what I want to draw myself as. And I'd be like, yes, you are a space cowgirl. And you have the power to do that. Um, which I think is like so beautiful to give young people, especially young people, the power to say, I am this thing. And you cannot define me as otherwise. Um, mm -hmm. It's so great. Yep. Um, this is going to be a long one because I just have so many thoughts that just like came from what you said. Um, I first wanted to kind of talk about, so as a child, I was so lucky to have parents that really, ca that really cared about um, what I felt inspired by and really cared about what I enjoyed or felt drawn to. So like when I was like, mom, I want to go do theater. Like I want to go, go take these classes. She's like, like, by all means, like, go ahead. And she thought it was great that, you know, I really fa felt drawn to something. And that at such a young age, I was already like, I want to be an actress. That's exactly what I want to do. That's what I'm going to go and pursue. Um, and then also, I actually, like, I received, for, like, my seventh birthday, maybe, um, I received, like, a, a full case of the Roald Doll books. Oh, my God. Those are, like, my most prized possessions. But... I still have them to this day. I pass them off to my younger brother, but <laughs> I still have them. And like the biggest thing I took away from Roald Dahl's like author's note that he wrote in every single one of his books is that like because we oftentimes stigmatize arts and literature and all these like um, practices that like belong kind of to fine arts um, or to like soft skills, a lot of times it's easy for the student for like kids who have a lot of imagination we're all born with so much imagination it's crazy like the kids that i've been in the art hour with they can just create characters it's like i even i wouldn't be able to do that and the fact that we are just born with so many ideas just like spouting out of our ears like we have so much potential just r straight out of the womb as we view the world in a completely different way um but many adults um as we grow older as we enter adulthood lose that sense of imagination because they feel like it's illegitimate. They feel like there's not really a, a space for it. Um, like you said, they, they have narratives because they have to fit into this society or this mold um, and go forward to like pursue like a job um, that's going to pay well, um, like a nine to six. And you're just gonna sit in a cubicle, do your work, 
go home. Like that's, that's what I was set out to do as a human being. And that, I think that was a perspective for a long time. And that was something that after reading like those Roald Dahl books, I was like, wow, like imagination is such, um, it, it's such a special thing and we don't want to lose it. Um, we don't want kids to think that having a lot of imagination is outrageous or that the ideas they have are out of reach or like they're, they're just too crazy. You never know what might stem from like a childhood dream. Like we always make it seem like, especially in like movies, it's like romanticized, like, oh, space cowgirl. Oh, um, I'm going to go to outer space and colonize Mars. But like, as we see, we're literally, we literally have rovers on Mars. Like this stuff actually happens. And the, the great thinkers of the next generation are the people that kept that imagination with them and thought big. Um, who used arts as a, as like a, a launch point, um, really expressing their creativity um, and using their imaginations to brainstorm how they can make the world a better place. And that doesn't necessarily have to be through just like doing the regular, what society like um, usually like wants us to do, like um, just fitting into the norms. Um, there's so many ways to be like outside of just that little box um, and dream. And that goes along with, with like our parallels earlier <laughs> to tie it back. Um, like what I was saying, um, how my mom would make me bring a, a bag of oranges to like my friend's houses. Like we wanna bring that imagination um, into the future generations. We wanna bring that appreciation of the arts and that creativity and the freedom. That's most of it, you know, the freedom to be able to express ourselves and not to feel like, oh, you know, oh, I'm not fitting in or, oh, this is weird. I'm, I'm not really fulfilling my duty if I'm not um, specifically in this position. So I think that it's really important for us to go forth and give that present, like that, <laughs> that sort of present of allowing them to express themselves. To yeah, the generation. No, I definitely agree. And I think that's why the arts are so essential is because it kind of fosters this sense of creativity and imagination and all of those things. Um, because creativity is actually the number one thing that most employers are seeking out now. And I always feel like, I always like dusting my shoulders off because when I step into my interviews, because I'm like, I had an arts education and I feel that I have this creative lens that I can look at something and I can think about it in a different way than yep. others maybe, maybe see it. Because um, mm -hmm. I, always, I always give this example, but... Um, my first year at LOXA, my first year of arts training, I had foundation year. And they were like, okay, look at this object and draw, figure out how to draw it 20 different ways. And how you actually figure out how you're going to make it sculpturally, 20 different ways. And then choose the way that's the cheapest. Uh, because art supplies is expensive. Um, so it was kind of like, <laughs> look at something, t dissect it, and remake it 20 different ways. And I feel like that's something that we can do. Um, with this creativity and with our arts training is like we're looking at the world's problems and we're dissecting them and we're finding 20 different solutions mm -hmm. and then choosing the one that's most efficient or the one um, that gives us the most impact and things like that and that's why you know we are artists and we have these outer projects where we're teaching arts or we're learning about voters rights and teaching people about it um, so yeah I think creativity is so essential whether you're going to be you know, an artist for the rest of your life, or if you're drawing those Mars rovers or Mars habitats, so we can, we can live on Mars in the future. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, I guess, what do you think, before we, we start to close out here a little bit, what do you think is the importance of art within our society or within our communities? Um, and kind of like, what have you seen uh, art making change in, in your community or, or in LA in general? Mm -hmm. First off, I'd like to clarify. Um, when I was talking about like societal norms, I didn't truly mean like, like what, like what Arnie said, um, going forth, like art is beginning to take over um, even what we expect art wouldn't be. Um, the places where we would least expect to find it, it's there. Um, and that kind of goes into your next question, too. Like, 
truly art is part of life. It's an essential part of life because when we problem solve, we're using creativity. When we go forth to brainstorm or think of ideas, we're using creativity and that goes back to arts. Um, not giving students the platform to think or, or even like use the creative process to their best of a, their, to their best ability is unfair to them, frankly, because many students are literally being trained in art schools while at public school students aren't even able to access a simple arts lesson. We have to first bridge that cap, gap and sorry, that gap and make sure that everyone is able to access this um, because it is going to be so important in all like formats in all parts of their future. Um, and then when I look at like society as a whole and I look at art, like I've been doing a lot of AP world reading <laughs> and when we were studying Paleolithic societies, like, that's one we were on here, like, five billion years ago. <laughs> we already had art. We already discovered little, we already made little figurines of, um, like, the deities the or the, of Willendorf the people that we were. <laughs> yeah, Venus of Willendorf. <laughs> like, from the very start, art has been part of civilization and part of society because it is a way to express ourselves and a way to record what's happening. Um, and that ties into like history too, like how important history is in the scheme of things, knowing what happened and, and art plays into that too, having this sort of way to record history in, in, in like this format that's so interesting and intriguing to the viewer. Um, and when I look at like, our community in specific, um, I see like students kind of trying to go past the borders that we have that have been like made within that or that have just formed um, within our community to teach and to inspire. And I think like learning from like this one year at LOXA was just so so amazing because I saw my fellow students go out of their way to do amazing things. Like, um, I know like we have this sort of thing where we go to uh, charities and we like, we have the dance, uh, I'm blanking out, <laughs> the, the dance department. There we go, that's the word. The dance department go forward to perform for them. And like, I just know if I was a little kid and I had never seen a dance performance before and I saw these beautiful ballerinas dancing on the stage, like that would just be a life-changing moment for me. And also like going back to uh, when I was looking at uh, like my brother's elementary school, um, I like, I saw like the, an art, a theater performance that um, the PTA organized there and my brother was a turkey. So I went and I saw him be a turkey, um, it was for Thanksgiving, but you know what, it was good. And I, I thought, I thought the kids enjoyed themselves so much on there. They were having so much fun. Um, it truly is like a, a beautiful part of life and it, it goes into community building, it goes into history, it goes into forming relationships and also it goes into like, tackling life in general. Um, there's not one place in our community and in society as a whole that you're not gonna find some sort of creativity being used. And I think that's super yeah, magical. And totally with the history and everything you're saying, um, I think we as humans have this like intrinsic need to create. Like I'm also, I'm taking an art history class right now and um, we're looking at the, the cave true. paintings in France. And, uh, and there's this one cave painting where it's just a bunch of hands and it's like, you're kind of wondering like, okay, well, what is that? Is it somebody's signature? Like we have this intrinsic need to create and to leave our mark on the world. And art is so embedded in our history. Art is our legacy. It's, you know, what lives on. Mm -hmm. um, this year is the 50th year of the Chicano moratorium, um, which was when uh, the Chicano, it's the largest gathering actually of the Chicano community. Um, and it happened in Los Angeles 50 years ago when they were protesting. Uh, the Vietnam War and there was so much art created and so much poured into our communities that you know you can even see it popping up today like it's almost cyclical it it comes back and it comes back these ideas of creativity and what it means to exist in our communities and you know to pour joy and love and creativity into them um so yeah, I think it's it's so relevant. It's it's what we'll leave behind. Yeah. So I guess to mm -hmm. close this out here, 
um, if you had advice for any young art artists or voters or maybe even students who are looking at the arts and maybe are a little nervous to try like we were talking about earlier, um, I guess what <laughs> advice would you have for them? Mm -hmm. I will definitely answer that. But also, I just had a thought um, about like what you said earlier about like history repeating itself and specifically um, the gathering, the gatherings within LA. Um, I know like we're both kind of from um, like we both like have parents that immigrated from uh, countries outside of the USA and having all these different cultures come together in one country, that's so special, um, especially with LA. I think we're one of the, the most diverse cities um, in the entire world, I'd say. Um, like, we just have such a diverse and unique community here. Like, even just like, I remember going to the farmer's market at, in my local like uh, city just to like go with my friends and I saw so many different like vendors of all different kinds like people selling art that was like traditionally from Asia or from Japan I saw pe I saw people selling like like a type of bread that that was usually only found in Mexico like it was like a tradition that had been passed down um, within their within their family like we just have so many wonderful backgrounds that are gathered in one specific place and we use that creativity to influence each other um so one thing to take away i think and one thing to really uh like one thing that you should take from all of this or one one piece of advice i would give um is truly just to take action and to get involved find what truly motivates you or inspires you because I know from personal experience, if it doesn't inspire you, it ain't gonna work. <laughs> like, you really have to find that passion and remember why you started. Um, this is this is the best place on the entire earth to find yourself because there is so much for you to discover. Um, I, I'm going back to my original point with how big LA is and how I've only been here but, like for a year and I'm just like completely overwhelmed. But this is like the most nurturing community ever. And like any people, anybody from LA, please take full advantage of it and appreciate it and go forth to ex take these experiences and build them into art and build them into like what you use for your future. Like take those tiny moments in life and you can go forward to and like use them in conversations like these. You know, if your mom ever made you bring oranges to your friend's house talk about it or <laughs> if you ever if you ever went like baked a cake for a, a famous activist like arnie did you should talk it like that's an amazing experience and it's it's going to come up later on take action and make sure to save these experiences because they will affect and shape who you are shape who yeah, you are definitely definitely and use your voice and your privilege and your platform to advocate for others who mm -hmm. maybe don't have the same access as you um, and on that note, mm -hmm. <laughs> for everybody watching, so Create CA, the platform that we are on, actually has a pledge that we just put out um, for arts education. So if you'd like to sign it, go ahead and go to createca.org. Um, vote, vote coming up, vote with the arts in your heart um, and your God. community yes. in mind. Um, and yeah, thank you so much, mm -hmm. Millie, for coming on and for spending this time with us. It was so awesome to get to speak with you and yeah, talk about our childhood. Yeah, this so great. Yes. Yay. <laughs> and thank you, everybody, for watching at home or wherever you are um, and spending a little bit of your Thursday night with us. All right. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Okay.